Today I'm going to be going over every single Platinum Trophy for every single game in the Alan Wake franchise. And so naturally, we're gonna start out with Alan Wake Remastered. Alan Wake is a game that I went into with some very high expectations. Thanks to various reviews as well as word of mouth telling me that this game was something special. But unfortunately, the reality of things is that this game is very much a product of its time. And let's just say it didn't age quite so well. The core gameplay mechanic in this game was unique back when this game first came out. However, after only a couple hours into this game and several enemy interactions later, I quickly began to realize that this entire game has one of the most repetitive gameplay formulas I have ever seen. You have to shine your light at an enemy so that you can damage them, and then you shoot them. Die! And even though this game has a whopping six different enemy types, almost every single interaction with one feels exactly the same as the last one. Don't worry, Chad. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. See a dude throwing axes at you? Oh no. Oh no. Well, shine light and shoot him. Surface of tongue. Got a hulking dude coming at you with a goddamn chainsaw? Oh my god. Oh my god, chat! Well, it's very simple. You simply shine your light at him and shoot him. Angry murderer of crows descending upon you with the fury of Satan? Well, fear not. With light in hand, shine and... Actually, you don't even need to shoot the crows since they die from the light itself, but you get the idea. And this formula never changes. Normally in a video game, fighting enemies should be fun. It should be something that the player is looking forward to. But in Alan Wake, this was not the case. It got to the point where every time an enemy showed up, I wasn't saying, hell yeah, let's fight. Instead, I was like, oh God, not another enemy please just get the hell away from me i want nothing to do with you and this is not how the player should be feeling when playing your game oh, f oh. F you oh. Run. Oh. Oh. Please. I gotta run while looking at them, which means this horrible camera- Oh no, please! Oh! Oh! Stop it! Oh! Uh, their aim is like stupidly good, bro. No! No! I'm trying to avoid combat, chat. No, I don't like when the darkness touches me. And this was especially the case because enemies show up constantly. Oh my god, it's the goon squad, chat. Ow. And they show up out of nowhere. Ow. And from every corner and crevice. And there was just simply no escape from them. You can run away from some battles and thank f***ing Christ for that. Oh, I don't give a f bro. The next checkpoint's right up ahead. You See you nerds later. Look at this. Ugh. But most of the fights, you can't. And you are forced to deal with enemies if you want to progress. Oh, I have to kill them first. Oh, 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 oh. How far back am I? How far b Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Every gun feels exactly the same to use, minus the different damage values. Now, flares as well as flash grenades are very fun to use. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm thinking, chat? How about one of those? Since they're extremely powerful and basically one-shot any enemy on screen, thus annihilating them in the process. But besides that, Alan Wake has some of the most dreadfully boring gameplay in a video game that I have ever experienced. And from the start of the game to the very end, my feelings on the subject never changed. What the f Oh, what the f No! Oh! I got hit with a refrigerator. <laughs> 
Yo, f the furniture, bro. Oh, what? <laughs> Not the fridge again. God, no. Chat, the fridge keeps annihilating me. What do you want me to do exactly? Yo, Alan, can move, bro. Oh. Oh. Not the fridge, bro. Not the. Ow. Not the. <laughs> no, not the fridge. Oh my no. <laughs> No, please, God. What the hell? What the hell? Uh, stop, you mother... Oh. oh. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah, not that... Not that way, cowboy. Fridge? No. Oh. 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 Oh, 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 no, no, please, oh, I'm Alan Wake. <laughs> now this game originally came out back in 2010, so I don't want to be too hard on this game, but there are plenty of games much older than this one, with gameplay that was far more entertaining. Games like Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, as well as Ocarina of Time, just to name a few. I personally believe that gameplay is the single most important quality that a video game can have. And in my book, Alan Wake has failed in the gameplay department. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> so suffice it to say, making my way through this game was a challenge in and of itself. Not because it was difficult, but because it was genuinely hard for me to stay interested. I had to get the gate open. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? And how are you gonna do that, Alan? Do you care to narrate that part, you f***ing dweeb? I had to get the gate open, though I wasn't sure how, but I just knew that I had to. Oh god. But that's enough ripping on the game for now, let's talk about the trophies. Upon a quick examination of this game's trophy list, we are already face to face with one of the worst things about this game's platinum. Collectibles. Don't, 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 don't. He even came with his chains! And this game doesn't just have collectibles. They're the worst kinds of collectibles. These are the kind of collectibles that cannot be made easier to locate. Which means you're gonna have to use a guide if you don't want to miss anything. Now if you do happen to miss a collectible, this game does have chapter select. However, the chapters in this game are pretty damn long. So if you miss a collectible at the very end of a chapter, for example, it absolutely sucks ass to have to replay almost the entire chapter over again, just to grab that one that you missed. And to top it all off, there are just shy of 300 collectibles in total. And 100 of these collectibles are thermoses. They provide no lore or backstory, nor do they offer any upgrades or conveniences for the player. They simply just exist to be picked up and nothing else. So happy hunting gamers because this sucks! Hunting collectibles ends up being the bulk of the trophy experience throughout this game. Oh yeah. Alright, that's every collectible in the base game. Besides that and the story related collectibles, there were also several miscellaneous trophies. However, none of them were particularly difficult and you can honestly earn the vast majority of them without even really being aware of their requirements. They're that easy to do. It's not just a typewriter brand, bitch. I don't even know what that trophy was for, but okay. They're all very straightforward, and so I had absolutely no issue scooping these all up. 
I'd say the best thing about the Alan Wake experience is that the story isn't terrible, and the characters actually get genuinely very entertaining at times. Whoa, hey, what's going on? You found Barry, or at least the next best thing. Howza! Barry? <laughs> hey, bestseller! Looking good! You... you... you're not real. Well, no shit, what gave me away? What, the see-through thing? <laughs> I'm a figment of your imagination, just like pretty much everything else you see here. Maybe even you. That's insane. Yeah, you're right. Everything that happened before made perfect sense, but this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> However, even that was short-lived, because once I beat this game, I had absolutely no reason to watch the cutscenes again. So the one thing that was bringing me joy is now out the window. Why does that matter? Well, now we get to my number one complaint about this game, and it's trophy list. You see, there's a trophy to play through this entire game on Nightmare Difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty in the game. However, you don't start with Nightmare Mode, you have to unlock it first. This forces the player to complete a second full playthrough of this game. Which is absolute bullshit for a game that I only ever wanted to experience once. Seriously, why couldn't Remedy allow their players to start this game on Nightmare? There was no justified reason for this. You want to know why? Because Nightmare difficulty is f***ing piss easy. Seriously, this is one of the easiest hard modes that I have ever played in a game. Yeah, even on Nightmare, honestly, this game's too easy. I say that, and I'm probably about to get my shit kicked in, but, uh... <laughs> but it is too easy. It's the truth, chat. Oh, f*** who that... Okay! Wow, there's so many guys in there! Even though enemies deal more damage and require more bullets to be put down, this was honestly never an issue. This game shoves resources down your throat. Seriously, there is never any shortage of useful items or ammunition. Hell, even some of the most difficult fights in this game take place in areas that are littered with flame canisters, allowing you to easily and quite literally blow away the competition without ever really having to spend any real resources. Oh. <laughs> oh, f oh f hit me. Oh, f oh, oh, f hang on, hang on. To put this into perspective for you, there wasn't a single moment during my nightmare playthrough where I said, Man, this is hard. I breezed through this entire playthrough comedically easily. And this playthrough felt like one giant waste of time. If given the option, I would have absolutely started my first playthrough on Nightmare. This entire game has been piss easy. I haven't... Oh my god! I love whenever you say this game is piss easy and then you immediately <laughs> die. It doesn't change the fact that it is! I may die like a foolish fool, but rest assured the game is piss easy. Oh, and to add insult to injury, Nightmare has its own exclusive collectibles that can only be found on the hardest difficulty. So I wasn't free from that hell either. I still had to hunt down collectibles painstakingly making sure that I didn't miss any of them. Okay. Rifles, rock and roll capital. Do I, do I even, how hyped do I get for Alan Wake Platinum, dude? How hyped do I get for that? Oh! Well, it's done, chat. We platinumed Alan Wake. And because Platinum trophies simply aren't enough for me anymore, I was compelled to get all of the DLC trophies in this game as well. And I went for 100% completion. Once again, the trophies in the DLC were no more difficult than the ones in the base game. They were all very easy and straightforward. Again, I dodge, but the game just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> oh my god. God, it, it's so hard not to laugh when a monster truck just comes 100 miles an hour from off camera and <laughs> rams into you. The only exception being the trophies to complete each of the DLC scenarios 
in one sitting without dying or restarting checkpoint. Now these trophies ended up stressing me out a little bit, but not because I was afraid, despite the battles in the DLC being significantly more difficult than any of the battles in the base game. Oh my god, yo, dude. Mm. Oh my god, the. Oh my. Oh my god. I can't tell if I'm having a skill issue or not. No, I was stressed because Alan Wake has a frustrating amount of platforming. The kind where one wrong jump results in an insta death. Which means one mistake and your ass is restarting the entire DLC from the beginning. I hesitated. I... Oh, I hesitated. I wanted to catch it before it got away, and then there was the briefest hesitation. Holy f this fing trophy with this fing platforming bullshit, man. This was certainly annoying. However, it was far from difficult. And overall, Alan Wake was one of the easier platinum trophies that I've obtained in recent memory. Oh! Alan Wake. Done and dusted. We can move the f on with our lives. And this only took me 37 hours to complete. And honestly, this was a lot longer than it should have taken. However, unfortunately, I spent an unnecessary amount of time on an extra playthrough of this game when I didn't have to. So honestly, I should have been done with this game a lot sooner than that. Overall, I would not recommend Alan Wake to anybody, simply because of the absurd amount of collectibles, a forced second playthrough, and some of the most boring gameplay I've ever seen. I would give this one a pass, trophy hunters, because Alan Wake is not great. You disgust me. Next up, we have Control. And you might be thinking to yourself, Matt, what the hell does Control have to do with Alan Wake? Basically, Control was made by Remedy, which is the same game company that makes Alan Wake. And not only that, but Remedy is making a very clear effort to show that these two games are deeply connected and both of their stories are clearly taking place within the same universe. And if that wasn't enough to prove that Control should be included in this video, maybe the fact that Alan Wake is literally in this game would be enough to justify it. Who are you? Do I know you? I'm your friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom, the poet, the diary, you look different. That was Alan Wake. The writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. What's he doing here? So anyways, enough about that. Let's take a closer look at Control and the Platinum Trophy experience that goes along with it. Not even an hour into messing around with this game's combat system, and I was already significantly more impressed with Control's gameplay. Sure, there's running and gunning just like Alan Wake. However, unlike Alan Wake that focuses far more on resource management, in Control, we play as Jessie Faden, a super-powered badass. She's capable of using telekinetic powers to fling just about anything at your enemies. She can make shields in an instant using nearby debris, as well as take control over the minds of your enemies and have them fight alongside you. Oh, and if that wasn't cool enough, Jessie could also fly. And I think probably my favorite part of Control is that you can use all of these abilities in tandem making you feel so overpowered and almost godlike, which was fitting for the god gamer. And compared to Alan Wake's light, shoot, and rinse and repeat, playing as Jessie was a genuine thrill, and she was honestly so much fun to play as. And because of this, I was really liking Control, even in its earliest moments. Um... Well, he decided he didn't want to fight me. That was a wise decision. As for Control's trophy list, it was pleasantly designed to be equally as fun to engage with. Outside of the story trophies, nothing in Control was missable, and only one playthrough of the game was required. This meant that I could enjoy the game at my own leisurely pace, and I could tackle whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, without a care in the world about messing anything up. I had absolute freedom to play this game in whichever way I desired, and it was liberating. Now, despite all that, this game does have a trophy to gather over 120 collectibles. 
Which sounds awful, but honestly, you run into collectibles in this game so easily that you end up getting this trophy without even really thinking about it. And this trophy didn't end up stressing me out at all. Hey! Collect 40 collectibles. Wow, we already got 40, dude. It's gonna be effortless getting them all. Nice, good shit, man. Hey, we finally got 120 collectibles. Woohoo! This allowed me to enjoy the experience even more, and by the end of the story, I was thoroughly enjoying my time with this game. Speaking of the story, I was very captivated by the narrative Control was trying to tell. Honestly, I didn't skip a single line of dialogue or any of the cutscenes, nor was I tempted to, because I was just so interested in what was happening in the world around me. The Federal Bureau of Control is a very interesting place, and the people in it are not boring. Did you miss me? I almost feel like I'm about to boss fight him Did or you something. Have in your zone? Huh? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bark don't make a wound. You did good. He, why did he ask me if I had piss in my sock? <laughs> I love it. This is fucking unbelievable. It's... I can't even... Not only that, but Jesse Faden, our main character, is one of the most likable female protagonists I've seen in a game. She's heroic, relatable, and very charming. And I genuinely enjoyed playing as her. Look, somehow, this hostile force, this hiss, that works? Somehow the hiss managed to infiltrate the building without any warning. And just like that, my name for it is official. The hiss. <laughs> like the sound of poison gas leaking in. Oh, there we go. Woo! We're good. I need to stop being surprised by all the weird shit in this place. <laughs> I'd say the literal only thing that got on my nerves in this game was the map. It's not the worst map I've ever seen, but things can get extremely frustrating when you're trying to figure out where to go, as well as how you're supposed to get there. Now I need to go to the Black Rock Quarry. What do I do now? I just know I'm supposed to be here, but I don't know why I'm supposed to be here. Apparently there's some dipshit I need to kill, but I can't find him. I'll just look it up, I guess. Oh, he's at- no wonder I can't find him. Yeah, so here's how stupid this is, okay? So you see where it says Black, Black Rock Quarry and the, the yellow icon is a- Like, that's the spot. You would think that's where your target is, right? He's not. You see the fast travel point? He's at the one on the right! Like, in between the power plant and the Black Rock Quarry? The fast travel point right there? That's where this dipshit is. Like, dog shit f***ing map. Like, it's- How are you supposed to tell that's where your target is? From what you're shown on the map? That is so f***ing stupid. Yeah, so check this out. Let's go to where the guy actually is. But yeah, here's where the guy is, chat. There he is. Wow. Wasn't that incredibly easy to tell from the map? He seems to be quite dead. Oh, <laughs> Hell, I found that the signs posted on the walls throughout the game were even more helpful than the map at times. And they did a much better job leading me in the right direction. Sorry, I'm scatterbrained right now because I'm trying to figure out where to go and I can't figure out how to get there. I mean, I see where I need to go. The, the yellow icon on the map, I just have no f***ing clue how to get to it. Ugh, chat, I'm so confused. Oh my god. Man, you know what this game would really benefit from? It's great that you have a waypoint, but it'd be nice if there was like a, a line. A line you could follow to get to the waypoint. Holy shit. Oh, there are signs that tell you where to go, actually. Wait a minute, hang on. NSC coolant pumps. Yeah, maybe we just follow the signs, chat. Let's follow the signs. Like, what a normal person would do in the real world. Huh? Wait. Oh, NSC coolant pumps. Okay, so be more attentive about signs. That's what I've learned from this. Jesus. There's a lot of dudes. Oh my god! Oh my god! Alright, we found our way, chat. The map was definitely a reoccurring problem throughout this game. And they 100% could have done a much better job with it. But I truly do believe that that is this game's only flaw. 
The post game wasn't without its surprises either, with unique and dynamic boss battles. Oh my god, okay. The bitch is dead. I don't give a shit if I die now, whatever. <laughs> whatever, he's dead. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> as well as several different side quests, with even more to uncover and explore. With each victory, I would reap the rewards, and with that comes trophies. Oh, he's... How did I hit him? Come on, Bubby. Send one my way. Oh, you can hit it on the sides. That's... That feels so unfair, honestly. Hello? Is, there, is anyone there? What's up? What are you doing in there? Oh, thank God. Look, someone has to watch this object at all times, or it deviates. My super blazer never showed up. Can you help me? Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. There's an emergency. I'll come back. I promise. Okay. Okay. Just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer. <laughs> Fridge duty. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Oh, I should go back and help the guy staring at the fridge, the poor bastard. Keep your eyes open, son. Keep them <laughs> Hey, what can I do? Oh, you're back. Oh, thank you, thank you. If, if I look away, I don't know what this thing will do. You have to get me out of here. The door can only be opened by the Panopticon supervisor. That's Langston, if he's still around. Langston. Yeah, I know him. I'll go ask him how to get you out. There's someone named Philip up in a cell. He's watching the refrigerator and very rapidly losing it. Philip? Oh shit, I forgot about fridge duty. He's been there for a day, I totally forgot. But Philip can't just leave. The fridge is behaving erratically. Ocular contact is the only thing that seems to placate it. If we don't have someone in there watching it 24 7, people will die. I'll figure something out. I'm pretty good with these things. Later. Why don't I eradicate the fridge? Nothing would bring me more pleasure, to be honest. I've had a lot of bad experiences with refrigerators in the past year. Hello? Jesse? I'm back. I'm coming in. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. It would... God, you know what would be so <laughs> funny? If before you could get to him, the fridge just f***ing murders him. God, that'd be so cool. The fridge is doing something. Did I? Oh no! <gasps> no, Philip! Oh <laughs> no! Commentators curse. Fucking <laughs> fridge. I can't get out and I can't look away. Maybe I can cleanse it. No. <laughs> I predicted correctly, stupid fridge. I'm gonna murder you for Philip. I love how all that was left of him was a fing puddle of blood. A puddle of Philip paste. Oh god. Oh, it's a boss! I didn't expect that. Oh my, that was pig dick damage. Bitch! I fucked his ass, fucked his ass, chat. That was for Philip. Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. There's only one trophy in the base game's list that could even be considered annoying. And that was the trophy to complete 25 board countermeasures. However, thanks to a particularly helpful member of my community, he provided me with an excellent exploit that allowed me to easily bypass the tediousness that came with this trophy. Okay, so how does this shit work, Philly? Like, could you give me specifics? So what, you collect reward and then it's, as soon as it says that you got the reward, is that when you close the game? Turn it in, close app, then repeat. So immediately after you, you collect reward. All right, so let's, let's, let's see if that works out. Collect reward. I got it. Now close game. There we go. Complete 25 board countermeasures. That is phenomenal. What a great exploit and workaround. That was fantastic. What a time saver. God bless whoever figured out how to do that.
After that, I set my sights on earning 100% completion once again, and so I began going after the DLC trophies. And unfortunately to this day, this is where things get a little glitchy for people. For example, there was this vending machine trophy that has reportedly glitched for a lot of players. And apparently the workaround to fix it can be quite frustrating to pull off. However, I guess I got lucky because I didn't end up having an issue with this trophy and I was able to get it right away. Yes! More importantly, the first DLC that we would be playing would shed more light on the connection between Control and Alan Wake. So if you're a fan of both games, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Hell yeah. I didn't know it was going to pop off like that. Alan Wake, he's here, chat. Besides that, the rest of the trophies were pretty straightforward and easy to get, and I didn't have any issues completing this DLC. Okay, so apparently if I put this shit on the shit, I can shit. <sighs> really? Yo, where are my enemies? Hey, let's go. Work smarter, not harder, mother... And lastly, we have the Foundation DLC. And this one was noticeably longer than the Alan Wake DLC. And it required a lot more effort from the player. However, I didn't have a problem with this. This was honestly an excellent piece of DLC, and I really enjoyed my time in the Foundation. All this did was add more to the control experience. Some of the trophies were definitely more demanding, like trying to find all the secret Maneki Nekos, as well as gather each and every collectible that could be found within the Foundation DLC. This took a while, and in just 29 hours, I was finally able to 100% control and get all of its trophies. The DLC is over. What an awesome game. Overall, I can honestly say that Control was one of the most surprisingly enjoyable games that I've played in recent memory, and I genuinely enjoyed my time with this game. I honestly wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, but it ended up being a really enjoyable experience. And I could see why this game was so critically acclaimed. Honestly, I would recommend this game to just about anyone. It's a fun time with an equally fun trophy list. And to end this video off, the last game we're going to be covering is the most recent release from Remedy, Alan Wake 2. And I was very eager to see what sort of significant changes Remedy would implement into a sequel that is coming out a whole 13 years after its predecessor. Hell, I even tried to make myself look like Alan Wake in order to fit the occasion. My first impressions were good so far, although there wasn't a lot going on at the start. I was very anxious to get to the combat portion of the gameplay, but this game starts out a little slow, so I had to be patient. That being said, it wasn't long until I was introduced to the one gameplay mechanic in this game that I would end up despising for the entire journey, and that was the mind place, or more specifically, the case board. You see, our new main character, Saga, would be sharing the spotlight with Mr. Wake in this sequel. And her whole shtick is that she's a detective, and she's trying to crack the mother of all cases. And so she has this gameplay mechanic where you enter your mind place, which is a figurative location where Saga can properly organize her thoughts. And in true detective fashion, Saga has her own case board, where you have to use the clues you gather in order to formulate a narrative. You can tell Remedy really tried to get creative with the storytelling in this game. And I guess this was their way of making the storytelling aspect more unique and interactive for the player. Desperately trying to make you feel like a real detective. But there's just one problem. I could care less. The clues have been resolved to open the question and unlock the deduction. As long as, as you advance the investigation, new question. I don't give a f bro. What do I do now? Do I have to do the case board shit again? Yes part of the horror experience? Yeah, by making me scared of how often I'm gonna have to do that. I should profile Nightingale about this page. Or, I can ignore it. 
No, Casey's not following me. So what do you want me to do here? Does someone want me to talk to them? Do you want to be talked to? Or do I have to go into the mind thingy right now? Um, I'm an, I, I hate this. Investigate the crime scene. Figure out what happened to Nightingale. Do I got to do something with the body again? Oh. God damn it, chat. Yeah, apparently I'm going to have to just like spastically check the freaking case thing. And multiple times throughout the game, you will be required to gather all the clues in any given area. And you have to quite literally piece together this case before you're allowed to progress the game's story. And this felt more like a constant roadblock, just slamming the brakes on the game's progression. I do hope that you like this game. It's so much better than the first game, and I've been enjoying it. I hope you do too. I mean, I do too. I hope I enjoy it more too. I don't want to hate it. So far, I've been a little more annoyed than actually enjoying it, but, uh, man, what, do I need to do some shit in here again before I can leave? Man, this is a constant roadblock. You, you can't do, so what, you just can't do shit in this game until you f***ing f around in here, man. Ugh. The mind room rears its ugly head again. Like, you can't even leave the room until you do this shit. And that's just it. You physically cannot progress the game until you not only gather all the clues, but place them on the case board. This whole mind place case board bullshit was absolutely souring my experience. And I grew to sincerely and genuinely hate it. I signed up for a survival horror experience, not true crime simulator. I wasn't even expecting this mechanic going into this game. And I found it to be jarring just how quickly this became such a tedious procedure. And every time this happened, I was just so visibly frustrated and annoyed. Oh, Lord in heaven, chat. Gotta play a guessing game with what goes where. Like, f this shit, man. It's so tedious. This is not fun. This is not giving me immersion or making me feel like a detective. This is annoying me. That's it. And this is all I've pretty much experienced in terms of gameplay so far. I can't wait to see what combat is like. Figured out where that goes. Poggers. Holy f dude. Okay, are we good? Do I still need to be in, in the mind, in, in my mind's eye? Examine Nightingale's body. I would love to. Examining this fat, gelatinous f body would prove to be way more exciting, if I'm being completely honest. I already know there will be people who can appreciate this creative decision, but with all due respect, it's just simply not for me, and I want nothing to do with it. Call me old fashioned, but I very much prefer if the game would just give me a cutscene and be done with it so I can move the f along. Cutscenes are straight to the point and quite frankly, easier for me to digest. Look at Control, for example. I loved the cutscenes in this game. They would feed me the lore, and that was that. I didn't have to jump through hoops to figure out what was going on in this game. The game just tells me. Even when Jessie would have her own inner thoughts that she wouldn't voice out loud, you could always still audibly hear what she was thinking at any given moment. I mean, I would love to run some tests on you. If you agree, that is. Tests. I don't know, but I wouldn't mind understanding more myself. Okay. I didn't have to go into my own special mind place and put together a puzzle before being able to think my thoughts. Jesse would just do it for me, and I preferred it that way. And you know what? Calling the case board a puzzle is giving it far too much credit, because this wasn't a puzzle. This was more like those toys that you give your toddler. You know the one where they have to take the shape and match it with the correct slot so they can fit it in? Does the square-shaped clue fit in the triangle-shaped slot? Nope! Keep trying, idiot! There we go, that's where the clue goes. Where could these possibly go? I don't know. Hey, there- well, alright, sure, that goes there. I'm not gonna read it, don't ask me to read it! Some people may think, Matt, why don't you just read the what you're looking at and figure out where it goes from there? 
Well, because that would require me to read it. You see? Huh. And, uh, there's no way in f I'm doing that. It's not happening, chat. So just get it out of your thick domes. There we go. That one goes there. Oh, that one goes there. Of course it does. Find evidence. I'm finding it. Oh, I'll find it somewhere. Uh, wait, seriously, where the f does this go? Wait, hang on, hang on. Just put it anywhere. I don't care where it goes. Just put it somewhere. There we go. This just feels like you're creating work where there didn't have to be. And you're making story progression feel more like a job than it is an enjoyable experience. I know not everyone's gonna agree with me on this, but I felt very strongly about this. And unfortunately, this mechanic very negatively impacted my overall experience and enjoyment. But anyways, as much as that sucked, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. We got a lot more to cover here. It took a little longer than expected, but eventually I was introduced to the combat in this game, and I was immediately liking what I saw. Oh my god. Well, I thought I'd have to remove shadow armor, but I guess not. Oh my god. This game maintains its signature flashlight into gunfire style. However, it didn't feel overly simplistic anymore. I actually have a reticle for my weapon now, and it actually matters where the bullet lands when shooting an enemy. And not just for headshots. Enemies also have weak points now, and they can be tricky to hit depending on where they're located. But that just places more of an importance on aiming in general, and the player is rewarded for good accuracy as well as their skill with bullet placement. Obviously, this is a huge upgrade from the first game, where you didn't have a reticle, and it didn't matter at all where the bullet landed, as long as you were hitting the guy. Combat actually feels like the player requires a brain now, compared to the caveman style from the first game. And so I was pleased. This is definitely a step in the right direction, and it wasn't boring. Unfortunately, this game still suffers from a lack of enemy variety, but it is what it is. I was also quite impressed with the fact that this game genuinely now feels like a survival horror game, which wasn't the case at all in the first game. Calling the first game a survival horror feels more like a joke, but this game did a great job at putting the player in unsettling locations and creating an uncomfortable and claustrophobic atmosphere. These are the things a good horror game needs. However, if I'm being honest, I was very disappointed with how these elements were utilized. For example, there's this genuinely creepy location in the game called the Wellness Center, and I was genuinely spooked when I got here. This area even introduced a brand new creepy ass looking enemy type, and that was great. But the sense of dread disappeared very quickly when I found out that this enemy was the only threat in the entire area. As I explored every room and hallway in search of loot, I kept expecting an enemy to slunk out of a corner or jump out and scare the shit out of me. But instead, I was disappointed to find that this area is shockingly empty. And it feels like the potential for a genuinely creepy location ended up being a wasted opportunity. The only scary thing was the cheap jump scares. Now, don't get me wrong, I think jump scares can be great. Like at the end of the first Dead Space, for example. The build-up to the scare was quite unsettling, and the scare itself was very unexpected. And I still think to this day that it's one of the most genuinely terrifying jump scares in existence. And I'll never forget that memorable moment where I shit my pants. Overall, it really added to the overall experience, and it made for a great ending. But in Alan Wake, these stupid jump scares start to feel overused. They were just littered throughout the game, at the most random times, just to make you jump every now and then. And it got to the point where they just made me angry rather than scared, which defeats the whole purpose. Fuck you! Even the very next section you visit was equally terrifying, when you have to go down into the basement, and the atmosphere down here was fantastic. I was genuinely scared to walk forward. Cynthia? Dude, she was such a sweet old lady before. Remember? She used to like... God damn it. But once again, shockingly, this area is completely empty, and there are no enemies down here. 
It's just strange to me to create all of this tension and atmosphere only for there to be nothing at the end of the path. There's also these really random moments where creepy audio will kick in. And it's at the most random times when absolutely nothing is happening. And it just makes these moments feel so misplaced or poorly constructed. Seriously, what is up with the music? This is what I mean by they get so weird in this game with their utilization of, like, atmosphere for, like, survival horror. They'll have these random moments where the music just does this, but nothing's happening and there's no reason for it. Am I supposed to be scared right now? Because I'm not. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. Sure, there's shadow figures everywhere up here, but that's no different than what I've seen before. What's so particularly ominous about it now? Like, game, chill. Maybe it's just a weird style they're experimenting with. But to me, I thought they could have made these moments so much scarier. And so that was disappointing. Although, even despite all of what I just said, this game did scare me several times. And so overall, I have to say, compared to the first game, this was another great step in the right direction. And I was definitely happy with it overall. What? Hello? Hey, are you there? Sounds like this person got more than they bargained for. That made me jump. <laughs> that f***ing got me, bro. Now enough about that. Let's talk about this game's trophy list. The Platinum Trophy experience for Alan Wake 2 should feel quite familiar. Because the trophy structure is pretty much exactly the same as the first game. Except with some pleasant differences. There were several different combat-related miscellaneous trophies requiring the player to take certain specific actions when fighting enemies. And every single one of these trophies was very straightforward, no guide required. They're all very easy to understand and simple to acquire. And I got pretty much all of these effortlessly. The bulk of the Platinum experience was once again focused on collectibles. However, on the bright side, there was nowhere near as many as there was in the first game. Not only that, but all the collectibles in this game were made quite desirable, since they're all benefiting the player significantly. They come in the form of useful items that the player could stock up on, powerful new weapons to use at your disposal, as well as actual upgrades and power-ups to the player character or their weapons. This is the best way to handle collectibles in a video game. Because the player is not only going to want to get these, but each time that you do, there's this huge sense of satisfaction, since they're so beneficial, and they genuinely do make the game significantly easier to get through. Speaking of making the game easier, I didn't mention this until now, but I actually did play through this entire game on the hardest difficulty. And I gotta say, much like the first game, this game's pretty piss easy. And there wasn't a single moment where I felt overwhelmed or challenged. But honestly, that was fine, and it didn't really sour my experience. This game is honestly fun. Oh, you like that? You f you like that, bro? Oh, there's another one. So. Chat, I'm... The f*** is Hawkeye's real name? Shit, shit. Shit, shit. Uh... Oh shit! Hey, that's a battery from control. Oh! I can't hear this bitch's explanation of what to do because he keeps murdering me before I can hear the whole story. What? I'm sorry. What am I supposed to do? I'm busy getting my fucking head caved in. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over the sound of my skull being cracked. <laughs> the literal only downside to the collectibles in this game is that some of them are highly missable. And unfortunately, unlike the first game, there is no chapter select. So if you do happen to miss one of these collectibles, and you don't have an old save that you can load and go back to to scoop it up, you're gonna have to potentially play the entire game again from the beginning, depending on which one you missed. And this is definitely the worst thing about this game's trophy list. After this screen, it will show the new video drowning in the bottom left of the screen. Do not interact with the TV 
until you've collected Alice's photographs from the shoebox. If you didn't collect Alice's photographs from the shoebox, you won't get the video and it will have been missed. You can reload one of the previous autosaves if you missed it. That is, yeah, that is a crazily easy uh, collectible to miss. You could very easily f*** that one up. Oh, here we go. Um... Oh my god, no, don't kill me! No! <laughs> I just wanted a copy of Return! Yeah, we still have two chapters as a saga. We're done as Wake, so I'm assuming as soon as I finish this sequence, we're just gonna go back to saga. Oh no, not here, <laughs> bro! Too soon! First thing I see when I get back, I'm the fing mind plays. No. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. I'm drowning. I need a way out before I'm dragged under. How do I leave? I solved the case. The front door! Pins picture of a door on the case board. I'm a genius! <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out! I leave through the front door. Giga brain. I'm a genie. <laughs> In fact, as it turns out, I ended up missing something that was incredibly important that I needed for a trophy. And after I beat the game, I ended up having to play another three hours of a new playthrough just to grab what I missed in order to earn my last trophy and get the platinum. Fuck. <sighs> yeah, another playthrough, Callum. I got fucked, man. Fuck. She took aim and fired. Yeah. This time. Hey, Sonnet. In closing, I think my absolute favorite thing about Alan Wake 2 is just how passionate Remedy's development team was when they were making it. Remedy puts so much love and care into their games, and it really shows. It's really hard not to genuinely enjoy this incredible experience, because their storytelling and ability to create a narrative is very impressive, and I absolutely loved playing through this game's story. It was great. And you could really tell that everyone involved is so passionate about their work, and you could really see it in these performances. For example, this game didn't just stop at voice acting. Many of the cutscenes in this game are live action. And this obviously requires more of an overall performance from the actors. And you can't help but admire it. I really loved the characters and the story in this game. And for me, this was so much more than just playing a video game. It was an incredibly memorable experience. I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you love a good story in a video game, this game's ending will blow you away. And I can honestly say, after Alan Wake 2, I'm going to be keeping a watchful eye on Remedy Entertainment and whatever brand new games they release in the future. Because now they got me so captivated in their universe, and I just need to know what happens next. And so, after just over 30 hours of gameplay, you're probably wondering to yourself, is it worth it? And if it wasn't already obvious, I would say that it absolutely is. Even despite the one or two things that I really hated. Overall, I really enjoyed this game, and the story was easily the best part. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you guys enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for all things trophy related, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the full Platinum Experience playlist over on my channel for many more Platinum Trophy videos on other games. And lastly, I get all this footage to make these videos through my live streams. So if you want to see these videos happen before they actually happen, consider stopping by to chill with me and my community. It's a fun time. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. So take it easy. Have a good one. And I will definitely see you in the next one.